I think that CAR T's are a natural extension of transplantation and grew from transplantation. Um, for years, since the early 70s, we understood that one of the ways that marrow transplantation worked was because of the immunologic effect of the T cells coming from the donor recognizing the leukemia in the recipient as being foreign and rejecting it. And it's been our goal, our dream, for decades to try and be able to isolate the T cells that are able to see uh, the leukemia to expand and make them more effective and more specific so we could get all the benefits of transplantation without having to suffer uh, the consequences of graft-versus-host disease and also that we could make that anti-T cell effect uh, more potent. Um, and so I think that in each disease we're going to be facing uh, different questions. If you look at autologous transplantation, right now the most common indication for autologous transplantation is for multiple myeloma. The second most common uh, indication is for non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Uh, and I think that uh, in multiple myeloma, I will be surprised if CAR T cells don't largely replace autologous transplantation within a, a decade. It's not going to happen in two years or three years, but the early results with uh, BCMA CAR Ts are so impressive that uh, they will be used. Uh, now, when they'll be used and how it will migrate from autologous transplantation being the first form of therapy, uh, and then at some point we'll be adding CAR Ts to myeloma to try and take patients who had good responses and turn them into cures. And then eventually, if we can continually do that, then perhaps we will just use conventional chemotherapy with the CAR T cells to get cures and have to leapfrog the intensive therapy that goes with the autograft. I think that what will likely happen is that we will show that CAR T cells are effective in multiply relapsed patients. That will be the first thing. Then when that's achieved, people will say, well, I have a patient who's had an autograft who still has evidence of minimal residual disease. Can I add CAR T cells in an attempt to get rid of that last minimal residual disease and translate those patients into cure? And that would be a huge victory for everyone, obviously. But at some point, people will then say, well, CAR Ts are so effective in getting rid of that minimal residual disease, do I really need the transplant? And then they'll go from getting a good, complete response with conventional therapy to just adding the CAR T at the end and supplanting the transplant. I mean, I think that is a, a believable scenario for, for how things may go with CAR Ts. It, that, that's, but that's a decade or 15 year journey for that to happen, uh, but I, I think it, it's very likely that that could happen. And I don't mean to <clears throat> disregard the incredible expense and the fact that in the short term there are people that should be able to get these therapies that may not be able to get that, and that is socially just unjustifiable. Uh, there's lots that's wrong with our healthcare system, uh, and that it's going to take a lot of attention to, to careful attention right now to make these things accessible. <clears throat> but I wouldn't let that also cloud the future of what can be achieved. When you think of cost effectiveness, therapies that don't work are infinitely expensive. And if you think about what's important to humans, living is probably more important than anything else. So people will always want therapies that can extend their life or cure them. And so there will always be a market for that. And when there's a market for that, there will always be people who will invest in it. And when people are investing in it, there will always be technologies which will be developed to make it cheaper and cheaper and more affordable long term.